Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us on what I think is going to be another fabulous sunny day. Uh, my name is Rachel Simon and I'm one of the business development managers for Amber Waterways. Just before I hand over to Joan Paul from Stunning Escapes to do a quick introduction, just to let you know that you're all on mute at the moment. And that's just so that we can mitigate against any background noise. However, at the end of the session, we will have the opportunity to chat. And there's two ways of doing that. There's a little chat button you can see on the right hand side of your screen on your little panel so you can type any questions in there to us and we'll pick those up at the end and answer them to you um the other way of talking with us is there's a little hand symbol so if you click that hand symbol then it shows it flags up that you want to speak with us and we can take you off mic and have some dialogue we do appreciate that sometimes you can't think of questions immediately or you might feel a little bit awkward in this environment so joe and paul are there to answer any questions afterwards so um, please but don't worry about that. And then the final thing is that we're obviously live. Um, we're all dotted around the country. I'm in Worcestershire, Joan Paul are in Devon and, and then uh, Peter's actually out in Austria at the moment. So if there are any technical issues, then just please bear with us while we get back on track, but fingers crossed we should be okay. So I'm just gonna, without further ado, hand you over to Joan Paul from Stunning Escape. So over to you two. Thanks, Rachel. Hi, everybody. Good morning. We're so delighted you are joining us this morning for our River Cruising Through Europe event. And we're absolutely delighted that Rachel and Pete from Amma Waterways are with us. They're going to show you their beautiful cruises. And we're just really excited for you to learn more about what they do and what they can offer you. So yeah, as Rachel said, any questions at all, there'll be the opportunity to um, ask those at the end. But if you do um, have, think of anything um, at a later date, um, just get in touch with us and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. So yeah, we will now pass over to um, Rachel and Pete from our Waterways. Thank you, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I'm going to be taking you on a quick whistle top stop tour of our beautiful ships. And then I'm going to be handing over to my colleague, Peter. Peter joined Amma Waterways in 2006, so he's got lots of experience and knowledge. Now, I'm guessing, Peter, you've probably been on every single cruise that we've got, um, or pretty much most of them. Um, Peter's going to be taking you on that itinerary down the Danube. He's originally from Australia, from sunny Melbourne, and for the last 20 years, he's been in Austria, where he is today. Uh, so Peter will be giving you all of his experience and knowledge. But I'll just start off with telling you a little bit about Amma Waterways. So, whoops, I've skipped a slide there. Um, we've been trading for 18 years. We celebrated our 18th birthday last year, founded in 2002 by three families. Um, we've got Rudy at the helm, we've got Christine and we've got Gary Murphy, as, who are our three members of the family. Um, they're just very much hands on. It's great to see them. They're very involved in the business. They've shown great strong leadership through the turbulent times that we've all lived in for the past year and what's really exciting for us is that they're constantly still planning for the future so they're constantly looking at new itineraries um, all of our ships are paid cash so that's really important in these times that we find ourselves in and we've got a new ship launching this year which is the Amadali for Egypt which is a new program and we've got other two other new ships coming so despite the turbulence of what the situation we find ourselves in they're still planning everything's forging ahead um, and we've got the fantastic leadership of these three fabulous families that own us. I'm going to show you just a very, very quick video here. Um, I'm not sure the sound will come through because it doesn't always work on this platform, but I just thought it gave a little bit of a snapshot of our brand and who we are and the luxury because we're actually a five star luxury cruise brand. So sit back and enjoy this little video. It's just about a minute. So that just makes me want to go on board every time I see that. And um, there is a, a slightly longer version. And if you want a copy of that, then I can send it to Joan Paul and I can forward that on to you. And it's just got some music in the background, but I just think it gives a nice little snapshot of what we're all about. Um, you've probably all heard of the Berlitz guides. I know when we go on holiday, we used to buy those little guides so we could find our ways around our destinations and learn a few words of the language. 
and um, Burnett's produce a uh, river cruise guide usually every two years and it rates all of the river cruise ships in Europe and the States and um, there's well over 300 of them which I find quite incredible and there's a gentleman whose job it is to go around um, and rate all the ships so he looks at the hardware which the ship and its facilities what's included um, our wonderful staff he rates all the you know the service on board the food the excursions everything and then um, they get put into this guide with these ratings. So out of those 300 plus ships, Anna Waterways hold the top three slots. So the first number one slot's the Anna Christina. And then out of the top 10, we've actually got six. So you can see, you know, out, out of all the competition on the waterways that were incredibly well, highly rated. We've got the highest rated fleets in Europe and we're very, very proud of that accolade. So I'm gonna just whip you around the ships now. Um, every ship's different. They're all designed differently. Uh, our, one of our owners, Kirsten, she actually, Kristen, sorry, she actually gets involved with a lot of design of the ship and she's got a fantastic eye for detail and fantastic flair. And Rudy also helps design some of the ships and one of the ships I'm going to tell you about he was really involved in that as well. Um, so this is the reception area. So our ships are like floating boutique hotels and the average ship takes about 165 passengers. Uh, sorry, 156 passengers on average, and that does vary depending where you go. So the Duro is slightly smaller at 102 because it's a slightly smaller river. We have to have um, smaller ships to get through the locks, but on average, it's 156. So it's quite small and intimate. So here we have the reception. This is where when you come on board, you'll check in just like you would in a hotel, and then you'll be given your room key card and one of our staff members will take you to your stateroom and then your luggage will be delivered there for you. Um, you've got the lift which goes to most of the floors and if you have got some walking issues it's just important to perhaps have a word with Joan Paul just to make sure that um, the, the cruise is the right cruise for you and that you've got plenty of you know uh, opportunities to get up and down all the floors because the lift doesn't always go to all the decks and um, so that's something we can Joan Paul can talk you through the different ships that we have. Uh, our cruise managers such as Peter would sit up on the desk at the top of the stairs there you see so that's where you go and book your shore excursions or any any other help that, that you might need with your cruise you can go and ask there or at the reception and then we're going to move on to the main lounge I think this is like the hub of the ship so this is where we've got our bar and it, there's a lovely seating area here it's a huge lounge area floor to ceiling windows and obviously that's really important because with river cruising you are going through the heart of the countries and you've got the most spectacular scenery you've seen from fairy tale castles. Um, you know, if you're going through the Waka Valley and you, you see all this fantastic scenery, all these gorges, you can see vineyards, it's just amazing. So it's really important that you get some great views of whilst inside the ship and, and on the top deck of the estate rooms as well. So the bar here um is where you obviously get all your alcoholic drinks the staff do come and take your, your drinks orders as well because somebody commented to me once the bar was quite small but we come to you so you can just sit back and relax and we can take your orders um the cruise managers will give you a, a, a talk every night and tell you what the following day's excursions are going to be in this area we have guest lecturers on board we have singers come on there might be a, a dance some dancers come on uh there's a whole host of entertainment every night it changes and also this area turns into a little disco for those of you who like to shake a few moves as well. Um, so it's great to lounge and sit and have a coffee, catch up with friends, enjoy a drink. We have our cocktail evening here as well. Um, also just behind the lounge area, we have a small gift shop and there's also a library on most of the ships. So another area where you can sit and relax, chill, borrow one of the books. And um, we also have some uh, little newspapers printed here in this area as well. So we're on to the staterooms now. Now this is one of our twin balcony staterooms. Um, what does a twin balcony mean? Well, it means you've got two balconies. Um, one's a French balcony, which is on the right hand side. So you can open that up, let plenty of fresh air in, but you can't step out, but it's floor to ceiling views. And then the one on the left hand side is the one you open and step out. And you've got a little table and chair area there. So you can sit out, have a coffee. Um, we've introduced Riverside Dining for um, for itineraries moving forward. So that's something that we never did before. So you can have dining in your um, state rooms of an evening. And one of my favorite times of the day is first thing in the morning, grab a coffee, sit out on your balcony and just watch the world open up. 
there's all these mists that swirl down the river and then you get the wildlife and the ducks and the geese. Um, you see the lights twinkling on the riverbanks. So it's just a really special moment um, when you can see the world waking up and it's just really lovely and quiet. So in, inside your state rooms, um, you've got a TV and that it screens all the latest movies. You can um, have music on that. You can use it as a computer. We've got internet free all over the ship. So that's another bonus for you. It's completely free. Um, plenty of wardrobe space. And there's some really nice little touches we do at Anna. Things like having a little alarm clock by the side of bed, hand cream, which I think is a really nice touch, and that umbrella's in their wardrobe just in case it rains. And um, there's also a safe so you can keep all your valuables in the safe. Uh, there's a little refrigerator so you can put any drinks in there. And we, we top it up with complimentary water throughout your cruise. And then onto the bathrooms, you can see here there's plenty of room, they're luxurious. We've got Elemis Spa um, shampoos and soaps there, so that's a nice little touch of luxury, and we have complimentary robes and slippers. One of the questions we get asked is, is there a bath in, in you know, a bathtub rather than shower? In the higher categories like the suites, and yes, you can have a bathtub in, in the higher categories. And also, apart from the twin balconies, we lead in a, a, a category D and E, and those are a fixed window. So those are above a, the river line, which it, again, is another question that we, get asked then you can have a French balcony so that's the one that opens up you can't step out onto the twin balconies then we go onto the suites but obviously um Joe and Paul can take you through all, all of the different categories that we have there's another shot there of one of the rooms that you can see plenty of space as well um we're onto the dining now because obviously dining is really important when we go on any holiday I mean particular cruise we all like to have some special food and, and um, there's no exceptions here. We are members of Le Chanda Rotisseau, which is a French gastronomic society. And um, this is by invitation only. Uh, all of our food is locally sourced and it's freshly cooked every day whilst um, guests are on board. So absolutely spectacular. And we have one, one evening during the week where we have a full Le Chan, um, evening and all the wines are paired as well. So that, that's really quite spectacular. I also like to say that um, we have lots of food on board. It's not all just about fancy food. If you fancy having burger and chips, you can, or if you fancy a nice salad or pasta or stir fry. So, you know, there's a whole vast range of food that we cater for. Uh, this shop here is one of our, uh, sorry, is our main dining room. And you can see different table settings. So there's, tables for like four, six, eight, ten. And another question we get asked quite often is, are the tables for two? So if you just want to sit with your partner, no problem at all. When you come on board, just ask one of the members of the team and they'll arrange that for you. They'll just take a setting away so you can have your table for two. Um, otherwise, you can sit with different people every every night of your cruise. Um, this is available for breakfast, lunch and evening dinner. We have traditionally done some kind of buffet style for breakfast and lunch, as well as service. Um, but with the COVID situation, we've changed all the dining. So moving forward, it's going to be predominantly served to the table. There will be some food stations as well, but we have changed things around and with the circumstances that we're in at the moment. Um, dining for dinner, it varies with the itinerary, but it's generally about seven o'clock opening up. And then we say, come down between 7 and 8.30, so you don't have to come for a set time as long as you come in that time, in, in that time period. And then if you've got special diets like vegetarian or um, gluten intolerant, just let Joe and Paul know when you book. That information gets fed down to us so we can just prepare. And when you get on board, the staff will sit with you and just go through your, your, you know, the menus to make sure we can cater. But um, the food is absolutely superb. This little restaurant here is um, a little gem. It's called The Chef's Table. It's available on most of our ships and it seats 28 guests. It's bookable. You have to book in, but it's complimentary. So on, river, on, the, on our ships, you have complimentary dining here in specialty restaurants. I know for Ocean, you usually pay a supplement, but we include it in the price. It's seven courses, like a taster menu. And first of all, when you, you know, they're quite small courses, but you think, oh gosh, you know, by the time you've had seven courses, believe me, you are incredibly full and the food is superb. And you can probably just make out from the shop there that um, there's lots of wine glasses. So what actually happens is you get wine 
with it, you know, pretty much with every course that's served, it's paired and the staff will explain it. So all the way through to your dessert wine. So it's just a really lovely evening. Um, so you can book in any single night. I mean, most people, when you get on board, just book the night you want, especially if you've got a special occasion, you can book into there. And if the ship were to be a little bit quieter um, and you wanted to go in again, you could always go and ask the team whether there's space for you to slot in another night. So onto the drinks. Um, we have drinks with your lunch, which are included. That's soft drinks and alcoholic drinks, tea and coffee. Um, and at the same of an evening as well, complimentary alcoholic drinks. Uh, we serve you tea, coffee, bottled water throughout the day, complimentary. Uh, and we have a tea and coffee machine, so you can just go and help yourself. And there's hot chocolate and herbal teas and coffee teas there as well. And um, otherwise, so for instance, it's like 10 o'clock at night, you finish your dinner, you'll, you'll have to pay a drink then, pay for a drink. Costs are very, very reasonable considering it's a five-star brand. So when I was on board, not last year, the year before, I, I noted that the wine was about five or six euros, orange juice about two euros fifty, and the beers were in about four euros. So I would say that kind of prices that you pay in a high street. Um, and the portions are very generous. And when you are having your dinner, the staff will top you up and then you feel free to take that, you know, last glass of wine or beer up to the up to the, the lounge area to, to begin the entertainment as well. So now jumping up to the top deck, don't we wish we were there enjoying the sun, sun, sunshine now? Um, so this is where you, you know you get the most spectacular views from, from the top deck as well. We've got pools on most of the ships. Some of the French ships have hot tubs. Um, you can see, maybe just about make out the end of the, the pool there, there's um, a bar, swim up bar, so you can you know, do a couple of strokes, grab a little gin tea, keep back, relax and see that amazing scenery. And also, there's plenty of seating area up here. Lounges to have a, a you know sunbathe. In the winter time, we have heaters and blankets, hot chocolate. So we look after you in the winter as well if you're going on one of our lovely Christmas market cruises. Also on this top deck, you'll see that we've got some lovely exercise classes. We have a full wellness program again on most of the ships. Where we have a wellness host who runs about seven classes during the day. So you can start your day with maybe a nice stretch class or champagne yoga. I think that's my favourite. Just leaning over to have a sip of champagne. Um, doesn't seem like too much, too much exertion to start your day that way. Uh, it's all included, complimentary. For those of you who are more active, we're quite an active brand. But we also appreciate that not everybody wants to be active. So I always say there's something for everyone. The classes you have to book because the numbers are limited. So if the sun is shining, we will be on the top deck. If it's not so good will either be in the gym area or in the main lounge area doing those classes. Um, and the wellness host will be happy to give you any nutritional advice, show you around the gym equipment as well. Um, sometimes they'll do like walks in, into the town or jogging into the town as well. So there's a whole host of things. You get a newsletter every day with everything documented in so you can choose, pick and choose. You can go and speak to the, you know, the team as well and they'll guide you through what's happening on a daily basis. So this is the gym. Again, it's all complimentary for you to use. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit about a fabulous ship we've got called the Anna Magna. Now, this ship um, was designed by Rudy, one of our owners, who was an architect by profession. Uh, just incredible. For those of you who've maybe done an ocean cruise, you might be slightly nervous about coming onto a river cruise ship because it's far smaller than an ocean cruise ship and therefore there's less facilities on board. Um, obviously when you're in the ocean you spend a lot of time at sea, you have sea days and on a river you don't, you're docking in a different destination every day and you don't have to do that tendering process, you quite often pull up, you can walk off the ship and you're in the town or sometimes it might be a short coach ride depending on the itinerary. Um, so Rudy designed the ship really to try and encourage people who are into ocean cruising and a little bit nervous about coming across, he'd made it a lot bigger. You can see from this picture here, it's double the width. Um, so I mentioned before, on average, our average ships take 156 passengers. This one takes 196. So although he doubled the width and just put a load more facilities on, um, he's actually only put you know another 40 passengers on because it's all about luxury, it's all about space, not, not about packing a load of more people in. So this one's got four restaurants on board. 
don't know whether Peter's here to um, sit with me at the moment, but Peter, have you got a favourite on the Abba Magna? I, I, I've been on it and it's lovely. This one here is the main restaurant. Do you have a, a favourite restaurant on board the Abba Magna? Uh, I, I really enjoy the alfresco um, at the front, yeah. uh, particularly for that early breakfast with the sun coming in. That's that's lovely. I I, I agree. I also um, like Jimmy. So this is another of the main restaurant. So exactly the same as described before. Um, also got the chef's table on board. This is Jimmy's. This is like a bistro. I would describe it as Peter. Would you? I think it's yeah. got a lovely atmosphere. Um, long tables. Lots of people sitting together. We, we serve platters of food before to share. And again, with COVID, we've decided that that's probably not appropriate. So it will be a full service menu. And then this one's Peter's favourite. Um, and all the windows retract back on this, don't they? If it's sunny, so you do feel like you're outside. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, fabulous. And of course, you've got so much more space. So this is the wellness bar where you've got juice, juices and Another, another relaxation area really. And at the back of the ship, you've got these bikes so you can go spinning, which I think is lovely. It almost feels like you're carrying the ship as you're uh, cycling away there. <laughs> the state rooms are slightly bigger. So exactly the same as what I've described before. There's more balconies that you can see here. So slightly bigger going up to um, the suites at 710 square feet. Absolutely incredible. Um, you see some pictures of bikes here. I mean, Peter's going to take you through the excursions, but as, as well as there's been this active brand, we have bikes on board. So around about 22, the Amma Magna has more. These bikes are available for your shore excursions. Um, they're available for you just to take if, when you're, you know, say you, you rock up in um, one of the ports and you just want to cycle off on your own for the day, you can. We supply the bike, the helmets, um, water. Uh, I'm going to let Peter tell you about the, the guided tours. I'm not going to st steal your thunder there, but just to say there's something for everybody. If you're very active, there's active walking. And again, I'll leave that to Peter. Uh, and if you want to just relax and chill, no problem at all. There's no pressure to, to go on the active activities. It's just there for those that want to take them on. So I'm just going to summarise now what we include. So we've got all the dining on board is included. We've got your alcoholic drinks at lunchtime and evening time. We've got tea, coffee, bottled water, hot chocolate throughout the day, complimentary. Every night you get a sip and sell cocktail evening. That's an hour before dinner. So around about six o'clock if dinner's at seven, complimentary drinks. And that's when um, the cruise manager will tell you about your excursions as well. Complimentary hi-fi, sorry, Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, you've also got your wellness programme and all your shore excursions are included. There's generally a choice of around about four a day. So all of those are included. You can pre-book them or you can leave it till you're on board and go and see your cruise manager. You can also change your mind as well. So there's no problems there. Just before I hand over to Peter, I'm just going to show you a map of where we go. Uh, we can't cover all these itineraries now because there's just not enough time. We're going to do a journey down the Danube because that's one of our most popular itineraries. But just to let you know, we do the Douro um, through Portugal and Spain. Uh, we do the French rivers as well. And um, I know a few people are a little bit nervous about flying, so we have a rail programme for most of the itineraries. And Paris is a great one there if you want to go on rail. So we've got an itinerary going out of Paris. And um, we also do the Dutch waterways. Um, that's great for the ball fields. There's also something called Floriad next year for those of you who may be aware Floriad's only comes every 10 years. It's 28 kilometres from Amsterdam in a place called Alsmere. It's a bit like Hampton Court, Chelsea Flower Show, but much bigger. I mean, it's huge. It's um, it's about the future of growing, how we can be sustainable. It's It's got food and drink there. There's entertainment there. They've got a big cable car, all about flowers. So on our Rhine cruises, we we, we um, have tickets to Floriad included. So if you're interested, it runs from April to October. I think our cruise is it's from May to October are included. And there's also a big flower show next year during the May time, if you see that, um, I think it's again at the flower show, so you can actually tie that in as well. So that the Amsterdam itinerary is great for rail connections. So we obviously do um, the Danube, the Rhine, the Main, the Moselle, the upper and lower Danube. So the lower Danube goes to the old Eastern European blocks. That's quite an interesting itinerary. And then further afield, we do the Mekong. So that's through Vietnam and Cambodia. Um, that's a seven night cruise. It's a long way to go for seven nights. So we do pre and post. We 
we can tie it with extensions in Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, um, you can go up to Bangkok as well. There's a whole host of add-ons we can do, so speak to Joe and Paul about that. We also do Africa, the Chobe. This is the only ship that we don't own out of about 25 ships. Uh, we charter that one in. Um, it's a four-night cruise on the Chobe, and then we do things like gorilla trekking in Rwanda. You can do the robust rail. You can go to the Kruger. Again, a whole host of things. And then the new itinerary is Egypt. That's seven nights down the Nile, but we've got three nights in Cairo. Um, beforehand, where we take you all guided tours around, you know, King Tut's um, museum. You go to see the pyramids of Giza, the old town of Cairo. You have dinner at the palace. So there's lots of beautiful excursions there. You've got all the Egyptologists with you all the way to go into those wonderful temples. It's an optional trip to Abu Simbel as well. And then come back and have a night in Cairo and you can extend your holiday in Dubai, Israel or Jordan. So we do pre and post extensions in all the places. So, for instance, if you were going out of Amsterdam, you could have a few nights in Amsterdam beforehand, um, a few nights in Basel at the end, if that was the itinerary. Um, yeah, but again, can't go into all that detail now, but Paul and Joe will fill you in. So I'm going to now hand you over to Peter, who's going to take you on the melodies of the Danube itinerary. The screen in front of you just shows a few more of the itineraries that we have as well. Um, so hand you over to Peter now. Thank you, Peter. Thanks very much, Rachel. Thanks, everybody. Um, nice to get a chance to talk to you virtually from the office in Austria. Um, to cover really the itineraries of the Danube, we, we have several itineraries and you can see them here, Blue Danube, Discovery, Legendary Danube, etc. Um, but the one we've chosen for you today is the Melodies of the Danube. And so this is a cruise which is going to start in Budapest uh, and then it's going to make its way up to a little town called Wildshofen, which is um, in the bottom corner of Bavaria. Um, so Budapest, there you can get a better slide of it. Um, Budapest is your arrival destination. Uh, it is possible to do pre-cruise stays there as well. Um, usually I'm used to talking to people coming over from North America for these cruises, but of course, as if you're coming from the UK, you, you don't have such distance to travel. Um, but if you wanted to include an extra couple of days in Budapest, you can. Um, the ship docks pretty much in the center of the city there. And then it just meanders for these seven night cruise all the way up until Wilshofen. Um, so the slide here, we're looking at the city of Budapest itself and one of our beautiful ships. And I know I'm biased because I work and have worked for a long time for Armour Waterways, but I do think they are the best looking ships on the river. This is one of the Cherto class ships you can see just coming up to the chain bridge in Budapest. So embarkation would take place here. Um, we use an embarkation dock, which is just a little bit out of the city where it's more convenient for buses to come and taxis and to bring people from the airport, the train station with their luggage. Uh, and then we can embark the ship and then later on that afternoon, we then sail down to our main Budapest city docking location. We have our welcome aboard that evening. Um, it's a chance for all of us to greet you, welcome you on board. You can see here, of course, is our Captain Jan, Hotel Manager Guido, and my colleague there is Chaba, welcoming people on board the ship. Um, it's usually a fairly festive evening, uh, the first evening on board, people collecting themselves, enjoying their dinners, uh, enjoying the view from the sun deck, the wonderful lights of Budapest at night. Uh, and then the following day, we really kick off uh, and start with the day. As I mentioned before, you are docked in the centre of the city of Budapest, uh, just down from the Elizabeth Bridge, if you're familiar with the city. And so from there, we offer a variety of tours as we do in each of the towns. Of course, we generally assume you haven't been there before, so we will always offer a city tour, which gives you an idea of the, the city that you will be visiting on whichever itinerary it is. But we also have other uh, tours that we offer so that people have a chance if maybe they've been to Budapest before or they're, they're, uh, they want to see something specific, then they have alternatives for that. So the picture you can see here, the two ladies are enjoying some time in the Great Market Hall of Budapest. So um, this is usually part of our city tour. And we've also got a chance to do a Castle Hill hike. And this would be for those feeling a little bit more active and wanting to stretch the legs, uh, then that is a walk pretty much from the ship and then a hike up to the Buddha Castle, which overlooks the city. Remember too, if you're not interested in any touring at all, or you just want to have a lie-in, uh, then you can, of course, just walk from the ship into the center of Budapest. It really, that's one of the great achievements of river cruising, is that it's it's so convenient. You you can do as you wish. Um, for the tours, you, you just decide which tour you wish to go on, and then you join that tour with the people you'd like to go with. Um, and then off you go, or if you don't want to, you don't have to do anything. If you want to sit on the sun deck, read the paper and drink a coffee, you can do that too. We sail away from Budapest uh, in the late afternoon and then we're going to arrive around about 8.30, something like that, 
to the beautiful city of Bratislava. And you can see the castle here overlooking the town. Uh, this is the same picture you saw before in Rachel's PowerPoint, uh, where you saw the Arma Magna. And down the bottom of it, it says, um, times 100 best places to be in 2019. And Bratislava was very happy about that, even though the award was going to the Arma Magna, as that was the best place to be in 2019. But it's a beautiful city to visit. Uh, we call the tour there the Coronation City Walking Tour, um, because it was the capital of Hungary from several hundreds of years, while the Turkish people uh, were occupying Budapest. And so lots of kings and queens had their coronation, and so that's why we've named the tour. Um, it's a walking tour. You walk straight from the ship into the city, as you do in most of the ports. Lovely local guides come and join you for that. Uh, we normally have a series of um, different speeds. So we have a gentle walking guide. We have uh, take things a little bit easier, regular walking guides. Then we have an active walking guide. So someone who's going to try and take the tour a little bit quicker. Uh, we have tasting tour in this particular city as well, a chance to try the taste of Slovakia, which typically involves beer, which usually 10 o'clock in the morning is a good start to the day. Um, and we've also got the opportunity there, uh, as was mentioned before, we do have bicycles on board too. So if people want to take bikes um, and go for a cycle, they can, or you can also do the tour, which takes you up to the castle of Bratislava. We then sail from there. So we're there for most of the morning up until around lunchtime. And then we have some lovely afternoon daytime sailing. It's always a real challenge to try and incorporate daytime sailing and visiting cities and, and sites. So you, you're really um, trying to win the, the best of both worlds, if you know what I mean. So we do some sailing at night, some sailing during the day. Um, and the sailing that we do from Bratislava up to Vienna is quite spectacular. A lot of natural park area, you're going through the old area, which was the Iron Curtain, of course, which was no man's land up until 1989, past some beautiful old ruined castles before we make our way into Vienna for the evening. In Vienna on the evening. That night we have the overnight in Vienna, um, so the ship stays there the whole of that night. It stays there the whole of the following day till around 11 p.m. the following night. So it's it's almost a 24-hour stay in the imperial city of Vienna. Um, the tour there again. If you haven't been to Vienna before, we offer the very popular <clears throat> Vienna city tour, a chance to see beautiful places like uh, the Hofburg Palace you can see in front of you. Again, from there you can make your way into town if you wish. Um, where we're docked on the canal, the Danube Canal, you do need transportation into the city where the river cruise ships can dock. Um, but uh, we'll always have a number of people make their way, particularly to the Hofburg Palace here, you can see, um, if the Spanish Riding School is in town. So you can go and make, make use of that time, depending on how you want to do it. Um, the afternoon, uh, we have free time for you as well, time to enjoy the city of Vienna with all the galleries, the, the different concerts which are on offer, um, different things to see or just enjoy the city itself. Um, there's also a tour which goes out to Schönbrunn Palace. Um, we have a bike ride here as well. Vienna, of course, very friendly for cycling. Lots of good cycle paths around the city. So um, again, a chance to do as little as you want or as much as you possibly can. Really is a beautiful, beautiful city to see. Uh, then that night we will be sailing away and we're making our way away from the big cities. So we've started with three European capitals. We've started with Budapest, capital of Hungary. So, um, Slovakia's capital, Bratislava, and then of course the capital of Austria, Vienna. And so after this, it's a chance to really mix it up. And that's one of the reasons the, uh, the Melodies Cruise is fabulous because you get to stop in some of the little towns as well. So it's a mix between the big cities, the big capital cities, uh, and then the smaller towns. So this is a beautiful picture of the town of Weissenkirk. And this is in a section of uh, the Austrian Danube, which is called the Wachau. And what we're gonna try and do on this day is show you as much of it as we can in that sort of 12, 14 hour period of daylight that we have. So in the morning, we're gonna stop in Weissenkirchen. Um, from there, you have a choice of tours. We're going to be making our way down to a beautiful place called Dernstein, which is on the next slide. Uh, and then after that, you get a chance, yeah, this is Dernstein here, beautiful place to visit. Uh, so your choice would be leave the ship and to go and do a tour which enjoys Dernstein. Um, you can enjoy the castle above Dernstein. You can enjoy the apricots and sweets tour. Um, you may wonder why in such a famous wine growing region are apricots so popular. There are over 100,000 apricot trees in this valley. And so they make everything from apricots, from apricot soap, they make apricot with chocolate, they make apricot brandy, which is always very popular. So there's an apricot and sweet, a tasting tour as well. Um, the city tour of Dernstein uh, is more of a historical one. Of course, a very, very famous place. This is where the famous King Richard the Lionheart was kept captive for a number of years after he was captured by the Austrians. So there's a lot of that story as well. Uh, you would then make your way by coach from Dernstein up to the beautiful Benedictine Abbey of Melk, a chance for any interior visits of the Abbey, a chance to see the wonderful library, stand up on that balcony 
overlook the Danube as well, hear the story of Melk Abbey and a lot of the history of Austria, bearing in mind it's a letter from here where Austria was first named in the 900s. So the history here does go back quite a lot. And that gives you some of this classical Baroque style architecture, the Marie Therese Yellow, really um, a wonderful sight to see. We then make our way back to the ship after we've enjoyed time in Melk. And then we're going to sail up a section of the Danube, which is called the Strudengau. And Strudengau used to be a very dangerous section of the river. There's a couple of islands in the middle of the river, um, and there's a couple of little whirlpools. And this is what a Struden is in German. It's, a, it's that little whirlpool, which where if you were on a sail-powered ship, you could find yourself in quite a bit of trouble. Of course, with our ships, no trouble, but a beautiful section of the river to enjoy. It's around 25 kilometers long, um, lots of little villages to see, little castles on the hilltop, little old ruined churches, beautiful vineyards everywhere too, um, postcard sort of thing. Uh, and then from there, we will be stopping in a place which is called Grein. Um, and Grein as well has a number of castles there to visit. Um, it, depending on which cruise you are on, depends which castle you would you would go to. This is the castle of Clam, it's called. It's a little bit back from the river. There is also one in the city of Grein, or the, the village of Grein, um, which is Greinberg, uh, and that castle, the Greinberg castle, is actually owned and still lived in by descendants um, from Queen Victoria, so from the Saxon Goberg Gotha family. Um, they are still descendants from them, and um, one of the biggest forestry owners uh, in the whole country of Austria. So some really amazing sort of local history. There's a castle there which is still currently being lived in. Uh, the Strudengau too, you've seen there's lots and lots of vineyards all the way through there. What's important with that too, is that we do do a series of what we call wine cruises throughout the summer season um, and then into, into autumn as well, into fall time as well. And this involves uh, a chance to have a regular cruise, but just to add a bit of a wine theme to it. So um, another specially wine paired dinner, a wine host there, maybe one of the wine hosts from the UK come over, explain to you the production of the wine that they make. Um, you get a chance to try their wine, you hear about old world wine, compare it to new world wine. So it's a regular cruise, just with more added. So we'll sail away from Grein early in the morning. We then make our way to Linz. Uh, Linz is the third biggest city in Austria, population there of around 200,000 people. Again, you're docking walking distance from the center of the city. Uh, and it's really your choice. This, the ship will be there from around eight o'clock in the morning through until around 11 o'clock at night. So you can really go and enjoy Linz if you like. You, Linz itself, 2009, uh, was inducted to the European Capital of Culture. Um, it has some wonderful museums there and galleries and also a uh, new electronic museum. So it's had a real focus from this, this time in 2009 when it was the capital of culture for Europe. Uh, from there as well, so you can enjoy Linz for the whole day, walk in and out, no problem. Or we offer a tour from there down to the beautiful Alpine town of Salzburg, which will be on our next slide. Salzburg is a, uh, needs very little introduction, of course, um, very famous for the history of Mozart and of course the sounds of music and on that tour actually when you drive from Linz down to Salzburg uh, you will be stopping at Monsey on the way this is famous for the church from the film of the sound of music so if you're a big fan of that film uh, then you get a real touch of the sound of music. Uh, history of Mozart you hear all about that as well on a day tour down to Salzburg so the ship stays where it is you would travel down to Salzburg uh, enjoy time there a tour there free time there and also if you look at it right now you can imagine what this place looks like at Christmas time with the Austrian style Christmas markets all through the city, the lights. Um, we do do Christmas market tours as well. And of course, Salzburg is one of the most popular destinations on that tour. Uh, apart from Salzburg, if you've perhaps been there before, um, as many people have, it's, it's on many people's choice list. Uh, we would give you an option or a, a, another offer for that day. Um, similar sort of distance from Linz is to travel off across the Czech border, the Czech Republic border, and visit this amazing Baroque gem, which is Chesky Krumlov. Uh, so this is the Vultava River, you can see going through the Moldau River. It's the same river that makes its way through Prague. It has very uh, many similarities with the city of Prague, only a much smaller little version of it. So lots of different styles of architecture, very different flair to Austria, where you would have visited. It's uh, with the Czech food, the Czech dining, Czech restaurants. So it's, uh, it's a chance to explore a little bit of the Czech Republic for that day, if you would like. So uh, apart from Linz, where you have walking tours of Linz and you have your cycle tour of Linz, you've got the chance to go off to Salzburg, perhaps you can go off to Chesky Krumlov. The, the choices are really are yours. It's a wonderful day in Linz. We then sail away at night from Linz, uh, make our way up this final section of the upper Danube until we get to beautiful Bavarian city. So we cross the Austrian border 
about a kilometer from here, and then we enter Bavaria in the city of Passau. And um, Passau is called the Three River City, and you get a really good look at why when you see where our ship is doing a U-turn down the bottom. Um, to the bottom left-hand side, you can see the lighter colored water. This is the water of the Inn River. So it's making its way down from St. Moritz in the Alps in Switzerland. Then in the middle is, of course, the Danube coming down originally from the Black Forest. And the Little River over there to the right-hand side uh, is coming in uh, from the Czech Forest. So it comes in, it's quite a little bit darker than the other two rivers, but, uh, but beautiful, beautiful um, Baroque style town. Again, you dock right next to the city. From there, you would have a walking tour of the city or a chance to hike up to that castle. Um, there's even the River Inn bike tour, which takes you off down the Inn River as opposed to up the Danube. So some pretty amazing sights to see, wonderful cobblestone streets, little cafes. And again, do the tours if you like. You, we'd love you to do them, but if you, uh, if you just want to enjoy some free time in Paso in the morning, go and see the biggest cathedral organ in the world, you could do so if you wanted. From here then we have a little short sail, a couple of hours in the afternoon, up to our final destination, which is the town of Vilshofen. Uh, Vilshofen, we're there in the afternoon. Usually people are getting themselves sorted for disembarkation the following day. It's a lovely little village to go and explore. Um, it's also where we christen most of our ships, so we have a very fond relationship. It's like Armour Waterway's little home on the River Danube, which is great. And uh, we have a wonderful docking location. You can walk from there into the centre. It's also um, very convenient for our evening entertainment, where the local people come and join us for a uh, traditional Oktoberfest, but it's an Oktoberfest that happens all year round. So every time we visit, up goes the tent, out comes the umpa, and uh, the local people love it. I think we've been doing that now for probably, I suppose, seven or eight years, and uh, yes, it never gets tiring, the Oktoberfest of Vilshofen. Often there's dancing, the mayor will come down, the head of the tourist office is also there, he does some commentary. Really, really good fun. And of course, a chance to try some beer pilsner. The beer pilsner was invented by a man actually coming from Vilshofen all those years ago. So the following morning from Vilshofen is then departure day. Um, you have a variety of choices, of course. Um, it's not far if you wish to get hire a car from there. You can catch trains from Vilshofen. You can catch trains from Vilshofen to Munich. Of course, Munich is your local airport uh, for departure point, if you like, and Munich airport. Um, wonderful Lufthansa hub as an airport to use. Um, a choice as well, if you wish this just to continue because it's too quick for this all to end, why don't we go to Prague? Now, Prague, if you haven't been, one of the most popular visited cities in Europe and just an amazing place to see uh, all the different architectural styles you can see. Very walkable city, lovely cobblestones, got that mystique of an evening, that, that whole I'm in the Middle Ages feel about it. So really a wonderful destination. Again, this Vultava River used to be called the Moldau. There we have a three night post cruise stay. Uh, so this would mean we would leave the ship in the morning from Vilshofen with our luggage. We go by coach. It's normally around a four hour drive, but instead of going straight to Prague where we couldn't check in, um, we instead we go to a town called Regensburg, which is really beautiful. Another medieval marvel. Um, we'll stop there, some free time for lunch, perhaps go and try some of the oldest sausages in Germany, or at least from the oldest sausage kitchen. Uh, and then we travel on to Prague, arriving into Prague in the afternoon, around about four o'clock to one of our inner city hotels. Uh, then that night you'll have an orientation, walk with your version of me, your cruise manager will take you around the city, show you what's around the hotel, what's available, places to eat and things of which there is just an incredible amount in Prague. Uh, and then the following morning city tour again, of course, a chance to explore, get your feelings, where am I in the city? Uh, then the afternoon, some free time to enjoy. The following day, we do have a tour which goes off to visit the concentration camp of Terezin or Theresian Stadt. So that's a choice you make if you wish to go. Of course, for some, a very important part of their holiday for others, um, not something that they would choose. So it is an optional choice to do. And then the following day is then officially departure day. I'm sure you could extend even more if you wanted to, but officially that's when it would finish. And a chance then to fly back um, to home and destination, having had a wonderful holiday, I would suggest. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. I wish I was there now, Peter. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Thanks so much for, um, for bringing well. that uh, alive. I'm sure we all wish we were there, don't we? That that's just amazing. That your knowledge of the of the Danube and all those wonderful places and tours that we can go on. Um, obviously, it's quite important with the times that we're in that things have changed. So um, we take the health and safety of guests very seriously. Uh, we haven't cruised properly for just over a year now. And we did have, um, last summer down the Rhine, we had some short charters for a German company 
Uh, five, some five day cruises where we we did cruise, but these weren't open uh, available to um, all of our guests. It was just that sort of closed market. And we had some protocols which we put on board. Um, when we start sailing again, we will be adhering to all the local guidelines. So for instance, our shore excursions, you're usually only about 20 people on them, but if the local um, guidelines are no more than 10, then we will adhere to that guideline. Um, so what we did last year and what we'll be doing moving forward is uh, the wonderful crew were asked to wear face coverings on the ship. And then as our guests, we would just, just ask guests to use their face coverings when they were moving, for instance, from the lounge to the, st the stateroom or from the lounge to um, the, do the dining room. Um, in that lounge area, which we showed you the image of, we put some perspex screens up as well, as you've seen quite a few pubs and restaurants. Um, the shore excursions, obviously a lot of them are outdoors, which is great. And we have these quiet boxes, these are the little headphones with the little boxes. So you, when your guide's taking you around, there's plenty of distance there as well. So that, that's quite good. So we're temperature checking everybody that comes on board, that's guests and also our crew. And we ask you to fill in a little questionnaire before you, you join the cruise too. Obviously we'll be adhering to social distancing on board and ashore. Uh, this is quite important uh, with air conditioning. We've got some really sophisticated units within the state rooms and also around the ship. So the air is not circulated all around the ship. It's actually kept within the individual units that we've got. So um, that, that's also quite important. We also sanitise your luggage when we bring it on board for you. And for those of you who have cruised before, you know when you go into the restaurant, you get the sanitize, hand sanitizers. We've got those and other areas of the ships as well. Um, on our website, we've got a whole section on protocols and travelling in confidence. So every time something changes, we update that as well. And there's a little video you can watch, which is um, from our uh, one of our owners, Christine. She did a nice little video on the protocols. So we're coming towards the end of our presentation now, and um, I'm going to get Joe and Paul back just to say a few words before we go. We'll have a Q&A now. Um, as a, we've put an exclusive offering, which is if you book within two weeks of this webinar, um, we're on sale for 21, obviously, 22 and 2023. So if you make a reservation on our European, our Egypt or our Mekong sailings, you can get an extra discount of £150 per couple. If you book a suite, that goes up to £300. If you're a solo travel traveller, we halve that. Um, so that's just an exclusive that you can only get booking through Joe and Paul and it's valid for two weeks. We have got so many offers on at the moment, depending on when you're travelling. We've got some uh, free land, which actually it finishes today. So if you book a cruise in certain destinations, we, we were giving free land. So free, free pre or post, but that offer does finish today. Um, we've got two for one on some of the land options on the Mekong. Again, that's that's finishing today, the end of March. But we've got plenty of other ones as well. So rather than me rattling through all of them, I think the best thing is just pick up the phone to Joe and Paul. You've got the telephone number there. Um, drop them an email and they can talk you through all, all the different options that we have. Um, I'm now going to hand over to, well, to all of us really before we wind down and just give you the opportunity to ask any questions that you might want to ask. So chat away in the chat box, raise your hand, um, or if you forget afterwards, obviously you can get in touch with Joe and Paul. I'm just going to check to see if we've got anything um, here. Let's have a look. Um, oh, there's a hand gone. Paul's ears really hand. perked up when you mentioned beer, Pete. So that went down a real treat with him. <laughs> so uh, I think, you know. Yes, again, sorry. Uh, Paul really enjoyed hearing about the beer. That, that went oh, down. Beer. <laughs> he was worried it was just wine. <laughs> Now, I've just um, accidentally taken somebody's hand off there. Somebody raised the hand. I if you could just raise your hand again. So I've just clicked on it by accident. Here we go. There we go. So that's Richard's got his hand raised. I'm going to take you off mute now, Richard, so you can ask a question. Um, let me just see if that's not. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know, Richard, you might be muting yourself i'm trying to take you off it doesn't seem to be taking you off for some reason oh the, the mute button doesn't seem to be working richard if you could perhaps um it says 
yeah, I can't seem to get you off mute to ask the question. If you could chat, put the question in the chat box. For some reason, I can't put you live. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. And Richard, if, if you're struggling, I can always call you afterwards and, and pick that question up. But if you can use the, the chat box, that would be brilliant. Yeah, I've just, oh, here we go. I think we've got it. We've done it. We've cracked it. Hi, Richard. Sorry about that. It wasn't working. So please feel free to ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year, if it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I just wanted to ask about solo travelling because I'm on my own. OK, great question. Um, we have plenty of solo travellers with us. Uh, and please feel free to join in here, Peter. Um, we have on some of our French ships, we have solo cabins, which is specifically for single travellers. There's no solo supplement. And then on other itineraries, we have a supplement and that does vary. We've had some supplements of 10% on offer at the moment, up to 25, so it does vary. But we more than welcome solo travellers on. Um, perhaps you can want to um, pitch in there a bit, Pete, about the solo travellers, what we do for no, guests. Sure, Richard, it's uh, um, and nice to hear from you, Richard, too. It's solo travellers, we have solo travellers on, on every cruise that we do, I would say, um, and we, we look after them in a variety of different ways. Some solo travellers, as you'll know, are very outward and very outgoing, some not so. Uh, and so we look after that, particularly with dining. Um, we have a couple of main tables which are placed in the main dining room, which are only five tops instead of six tops. And this was uh, one of the maitre d's came up with this as an idea, you know, because instead of, uh, if you're a solo traveler joining a table, for instance, for, a, for an evening meal, you would always be taking the place of a couple. And so that became difficult to manage. Um, whereas if there's only an uneven number on those tables, this meant that there's always been somewhere to find that if you want to spend meal times with others, then you can as well too. Um, when it comes to the, the single supplements on board, I know that we do different um, promotions throughout the season where there are reduced or there is no single supplement. Um, I think all of us agree that single supplements are a tough thing. Um, so there are times during the year when single supplements don't exist, but, but you'll find that there are solo travellers on, on each of the cruises that we do. Um, so you can join with or not, depending on, on how you feel. I'll sing you a song instead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Does that answer your question, Richard? Yes, sort of. I've got lots of questions, but I can I can ask Joe and Paul that. I want. Yeah, I mean, please, please feel free if, you, if you've got something else you'd like to ask while we're here. Please feel feel free to ask another one. Well, well, solo travel and, and cabins um, uh, and suites, particularly, you know, because when I do these things. You can't take it with you. So, I mean, I, I do have a thing of, I like to spoil myself, you know, and you Brilliant. can't spoil yourself better than going with Joe and Paul, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we want to spoil yourself, Richard, okay? <laughs> um, so have you got an you in mind, Richard? Is there something that interests you? or? Well, I'd like to go through at that length, you know, the different types of accommodation. And, and sweets and stuff because uh, when I go um, cruising, you know, I, I tend to spend a, want to spend a bit more and enjoy it that little bit more and have a, a bit of a sweet or single yeah. sweet, thing like that, you know. Super. Well, I've, I've got a little tip for you. I and mean, obviously, Joe and Paul can take you through that. If you have a look on the website, if you ha have a look on, um, you can click on the different ships that we've got. And um, if you click on a ship to get an idea, and they're, they're, they're all very similar, obviously this vary in size and facilities, but they're all quite similar. And then um, you, you'll see a deck plan. You click on down the side, you've got all the color codes for the, for the different categories. You can click on them and it brings up an image of the actual suite or stateroom. And it also gives you a floor plan as well, so you can see. So it gives you a bit of an idea with a few more images, but obviously um, Joe and Paul can, can talk you through those. But if you want to see some more visuals, then um, that, that's a good, way, a good starting point to have a look around uh, of what, what you might be um, wanting to, to choose. And what do you click on again for that? Uh, so if you go onto the Amma Waterways website, amawaterways.co.uk, I, I don't know whether Joan Paul, whether you did yeah, one. What um, I, absolutely, what I'll do, Richard, I, I'll send you the link and then I'll give you a call and I'll just talk you through how you can look at those suites. Um, sure. yeah, just walk you, you through it so it's, it's a bit easier to do. I'll send really, you one. Uh, uh, well. No problem, we'll do that. Thank you. Very kind. Thanks, Richard.
we are going to be sending out after this as well the recording of today so if you want to listen to it again or pick anything up you can do um i've had another question in here and um someone's asked the question do you have to go on the shore excursion so i think peter covered it a little bit no you don't the shore excursions are included if you have a day where you just feel like having the ship to yourself have a splash in the pool watch a movie look at the scenery no problem at all your partner might want to go off and, and do some activities you might want to have the ship to yourself yeah it, it's a completely optional um for you to do that no problems whatsoever yeah and we and, and not to forget too we, we have this uh, on all of the sailings we have a wellness host too so if you're if you're feeling active and you, you would prefer to do the more active uh excursions during the day or on board the ship instead of going and doing the sightseeing if you it, it's completely up to you absolutely sure holiday enjoy it to the most and and peter touched on wine cruises so i'm just going to briefly tell you about one wine cruise that we have um that as peter said they're hosted by a vineyard owners and um they're usually north american but this year we've got chapel down who are based in kent they're a lovely high-end winery they supply wine to captain williams wedding number 10 downing street the tight with the polo and the south uh, selfridges and harrods so they're a beautiful brand um, selling sparkling still wines, um, vodkas, beers, and gins, and they're hosting for us for the first time ever. We've got a UK vineyard, and that's on the Amaturto on the 13th of November, and it's going on this itinerary. Actually, it's a slight, slight different variation because we've got a lot of wine focus. So they'll be doing lectures on board um, with wine tastings. They will be hosting some dinners on board as well. Um, hosting a sip and sell cocktail evening and there'll be all those wine themed tours uh, a little few extras thrown in because it's a wine cruise so if you're a wine enthusiast and you're interested in British wines then that's a really good one to have a look at I know we've got quite a few singles on that as well Richard because um one of my agents has booked a, a group with some single travellers on there so that's a great one to get talking meeting and with guests as well so I'm just looking through I don't think there are any more questions um let me just have a look. One more question from Richard, I think. No, Richard, but I, have, I do have a couple of questions. I'm sorry okay. I'm up it this morning, but this is terribly interesting. Firstly, in Vienna, do you do a visit to the Opera House? And secondly, do you do decaf coffee? We do uh, when we're in. Yes. When we're, when we're in Vienna. We can show you the direction to the Opera House. We don't do a tour which actually goes into the Opera House. Uh, the city tour we try and do as much as we can in the morning and then really it's, it's what people want to do with their afternoon, whether it's at Schoenbrunn or whether it's the Opera or the galleries or the museums. Because um, it sounds like 24 hours is a long time, but really it's not very much in Vienna. Uh, when it comes to decaf coffee, absolutely. Uh, and the coffee machine that we have on board, beautiful machine, priceless machine. Um, does make wonderful coffees using decaf beans if you choose wonderful thank you You're uh, the other thing with um vienna richard we run shuttles so um there's a shuttle bus to and from the ship so you can go back to the ship for lunch and then shuttle your way back into vienna um, or you can stay in vienna and miss skip lunch on the ship and just do your own thing and a lot of people ask about the spanish riding school as well we don't include that in our tours but there's plenty of time on most of the itineraries if you want to include that and do your own tickets so you've got you know lots of flexibility with, with the cities that you can you know either walk to and from the, the ship into the city or within vienna we run a shuttle bus service as well vienna is the most beautiful city it's true it's the city of dreams so i've been with some musical tours and it's absolutely beautiful well funny you should say musical tours we are launching um or 2023 some music cruises which um, i'm just waiting for all the promotional material when we've got it i'll send it down to joan paul so if you are interested in musical um cruising we've got some musical cruises for the first time and we've got some shorter five night cruises coming up for 2023 which are brand new as well so you can always get some information down to you wonderful thank you and, and what we always do before anybody goes on a cruise, we will walk you through the various excursion options. So I think it's nice to have you know, a little idea of what you want to do when you're away so you can kind of plan your time. But, you know, AMRA are fantastically flexible as well. So 
you know, as, as Pete said, you can you can always change your mind, but it is obviously nice to have something in mind before you go. Wonderful city. Mm -hmm. Super. I think um, I think that's all the questions. So I'll just hand over to you, and Paul, Paul and Joe, just for a few words before we um, finish up. Lovely. I just want to say thank you so much to both of you for taking us through that. It was absolutely fantastic. I am definitely desperate to um, <laughs> take that out there and start exploring again. And we just really appreciate your time. And we hope everybody enjoyed that. And obviously, any questions, you know, just give us a shout and we will yeah. help you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks again for you both. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyable. And I uh, hope uh, all, all everybody else enjoyed it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, have a great day, everybody. And any questions, Paul and Joe are there. And thank you, Peter. Speak Peter. to all very soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye then. Bye. Bye.